Hey guys, this is Scott Tabor. In this video, I want to show you this awesome classical guitar study by Mauro Giuliani. It addresses a very specific and important thing for the right hand, and it's one exercise that I do almost every day of my life. I'm going to show you how to play it right now. If you're at all acquainted with classical guitar, you've heard these names before. These are like the grandfathers of classical guitar. Fernando Storr, Giuliani, Carcassi. Um, Villalobos is more modern in the 20th century, but he wrote a bunch of studies for the guitar too. And what a study is, is actually a piece of music. It's not just a drill. Like we could do exercises like this and that's great, but you're not going to really do them for long. If it's a composition and a legitimate piece of music in and of itself, you're more likely to play it and like it. So it's kind of a way to trick you into working on a specific technique. Now this study by Mauro Giuliani is called Allegro. Now Allegro is not really a name, it's just a tempo indicator, which is about 100 120 beats per minute. There's another famous Allegro by Giuliani also, which is a great right hand exercise. It goes like this. If you search for Allegro by Giuliani on YouTube, you're probably going to find that one. This one is lesser known. I've seen it categorized as Opus 48 number 5 or Opus 48 number 6. I've seen it written both ways. This is a terrific study for what we call the double arpeggio. We're going to play this arpeggio, thumb, index, middle, ring, and then come back to the ceiling. We're using all of our fingers. Of course, we never use the pinky because it's so weak. Unless we're doing a rascale, which is more of a flamenco thing. There's thumb, index, middle, ring, and then come back to the ceiling. That is what's happening this entire study. And all we have to do is navigate these different chord shapes as we go. So even though it's a right hand study and a really great one, I do this almost every day. There's still some challenges for the left hand in order to get it sounding smooth. Okay, now let me play this all the way through from start to finish slowly so you can see what we're dealing with and then I'll show you what's happening measure by measure. Hey guys, like I just said, this study is meant to work on what we call the double arpeggio, which for me is one of the three most essential techniques for the right hand. Check out my free nylon string guitar workshop below this video, where I do a deep, deep dive on these three techniques, including this one, and I show you exactly what you should be doing and exactly how to do it. The best way to think about this study is to just memorize it in different chord shapes that move up the neck like this, instead of thinking about individual notes. We are in the key of E minor here, we're in 4-4 four, four time, and we're playing sextuplets, six times per beat. And what that means for the double arpeggio is our thumb is going to be playing on every beat. So we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, the entire study we're doing that. What happens though with your thumb is that very often we're going to be playing the sixth string like I just did, and then we're going to have to jump to the fourth string and go back and forth like that. So right from the get-go we're going thumb on the sixth string, then the fourth string, fourth string again, and again. It's one, two, three, four. This is a good place to start for this whole thing. One, two, three, four. Okay, in the left hand we had an E minor chord but all we need is this note from it. And you might wonder, well, why don't I just use this finger? And we, we could do that, but I'm trying to keep a guide finger that we can slide up the neck and have an anchor that keeps us more stable and we're more likely to make it fluid and continuous that way. So your ring finger is on the second fret of the fourth string. That's for the entire first measure. One, two, three, four. Now slide it up two frets and put these two fingers down. I've got my index on the second fret of the third string, pinkies on the fourth fret of the second string. This is a B7 chord with E in the bass still. We're in the key of E minor. So B7 um, is not a weird chord. That's the five chord. Okay, after that, we're gonna slide up to these three and that's an E minor chord and that makes sense. B7 wants to go to E minor. 
I know you care about the theory stuff. I gotta tell you that stuff. And then up here, this is a D7 chord. That's in the key of E minor. And then we go to E7. What is that doing in there? G sharp shouldn't be in the key of E minor. It's a secondary dominant. E7 wants to go to A minor. So what's the next shape after this? An A minor chord. And that's the same shape we had down here. This is E minor and this is A minor. So here are our first shapes here. A good way to, to practice this at first is just to ignore the sixth string and just play these as a block. And then after this, we have E minor this way. It's coming from this shape, which we could call the A minor chord shape. We've got these three. At this point in the study now, something changes. But let's go back and see what this sounds like. This measure is split into two chord shapes. One, two, three, four, and then we're over here on the A minor. Now, by design, I think, this study gives you a little moment of breathing room as you switch from one chord shape to the next. We have to play the low E string on the first beat of every measure, and that gives us a moment to slide up. So it's exactly at that instant that we should move. So I'm going one, two, three, four, one. So that's exactly when you should move on e in each of these cases. And that actually is enough time. It's not too hard. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. With my thumb, I'm doing a rest stroke on the sixth string every time. You could do a free stroke, especially because we have to jump over that string. Um, but I like to do rest strokes a lot. I would recommend trying to do a rest stroke and then jumping over that string. And you can do rest strokes on the fourth string if you like. That's what I'm doing. Um, free strokes actually might help you do it faster though. I'm doing free strokes with my thumb now. Okay, now at this point, we have something kind of weird. We're gonna go down to this shape and we're not gonna play the low E string at first. We're gonna play these four strings. And this is an F sharp seven chord. Um, just to bore you with the theory one more time. F sharp seven is the five of the five chord. That's another example of a secondary dominant. B seven, um, F sharp seven could come before B seven and then B seven wants to go to E minor. It's exactly, it's a classic harmony thing and this is what's happening here. So this shape is actually an F sharp seven. And my ring finger's on the eighth fret of the fourth string. I've got the sixth fret here with my first finger of the third string. And my middle finger is playing the seventh fret of the second string. And we're gonna go like this. This is a weird part though. So for the first time, we're doing something inside the chord. So watch what my pinky does here. Tucking it in there on the eighth fret. And then do this. That's just a note from the chord. Pinky on the ninth fret of the first string. And it's kind of a weird part, but luckily it repeats. So we get a little more mileage out of it. One. Two, those are my pinky, take it off, and then put your pinky here. Do it again. Okay, like I was saying, F sharp seven wants to go to B7 or could go to B7. So we take this shape and move it to the ceiling, up one fret to your right, and we have a B7 chord coming from this bar chord that you might be familiar with. And we're playing the four interior strings now. And your pinky is gonna do something again, watch this. It's kind of weird if you're reading the music or reading the tab, you would notice exactly when that pinky would come in and you might put it down at that moment, but we should put it down at the beginning of the measure. It's so much easier to process that way. So even though we're gonna hear this pinky as the second note on the arpeggio, put it down right at the beginning of the measure. I'm going one, two, three, four, even though I'm gonna hear it here, one, Two, it's just too much trouble to put it down at the last possible moment. And that's an idea that we should get well acquainted with is the idea of planting. It's in both hands, get there ahead of time. Okay, B7 wants to go to E minor and now we go down to these open strings. Of course, there's an E minor chord built into the guitar. The treble strings are the notes of an E minor triad. I've got G up here. I'm using my pinky, it's just less of a stretch. You could use your ring finger if you want. Third fret, second fret, open. And now play an A minor. This could also be construed as a D7 over A. Call it whatever you want. It looks like a D7 right there, but A is in the bass. Now right here, we're gonna go to a form of B7, but we have to jump around here and play this B. Leave your ring finger where it is for the moment. And then we're gonna take it off and kind of swivel around because we're about to do a bar chord right here. So let me go back to this part. Jump over here, take this off. 
finish the measure out and now kind of squish yourself into this bar. You can bar all the strings if you want, but we did have our fingertip here, so I would just swivel in like that. I'm barring the second fret, five strings, pinkies on the fifth fret of the second string, and my ring fingers on the fourth fret of the fourth string. So we're going like this. Now we're playing the interior strings again for the second time in this study. Drop your pinky one fret. And then from here, we're back to open strings. Your index is gonna play the 12th fret. 15th fret, come back to the 12, slide down to the seven, pinky on 12, third fret, seven. Now those notes were all, try to, you should try to accent those notes too. So we go, maybe pull a little bit harder on those. And then we're gonna open string. Now, by the way, those notes are the notes, again, of an E minor triad. Is it E, G, back to E, B. The notes of E minor are just E, G, and B. That's all we need for E minor. So that melody that you just heard, we're gonna drop down way down here and do it again. Same exact notes. That's what happened up here. The intonation on my guitar is not, not great on that first string. Now we're going like this. Now the melody is in the bass that thumb note, and then we end on an E minor chord. Let's check it out from here. ending on E minor. At the end, there's a number of different fingerings you could do. You could go like this, and just leave your index down like that. Kind of weird to reach in there. I'm just trying to get back to the normal way to play an, an E minor chord there. Like this, and then I'm jumping here with my middle finger and then putting my ring finger there, pinky. And by the way, I've seen this written, I think every time I've seen this written down, it's a, it ends with E minor over G, but I think it's more like straightforward to just end on E minor. So that's what I wrote in the tab. So that is one of the classical guitar studies that I do every day. I do that along with this all the time. Every time I pick up the guitar, just about, that exercise um, bores most people to tears, but I kind of, I think it's like a Zen meditation just doing those exercises. But this is called Allegro, right? So that would be pretty fast. Your thumb would have to play every time that you hear a click right here, going one, two, three, four. So you can work up to getting it that fast. We don't have to play it fast. It just needs to be nice and clear and even. So I hope you like this study. It's a really great one for the right hand. It could be something that you do every day, or let's be realistic and say once a week, you can do that one. And you should definitely check out my free workshop below this video where I drill down on exactly this technique, plus two other techniques that I consider the most important thing for the right hand in nylon string guitar. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.